West Virginia Public Broadcasting takes a look at training and apprenticeships in West Virginia for American graduates getting to work. This project is sponsored by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. West Virginia Public Broadcasting's American Graduate Getting to Work initiative has been looking to highlight pathways to jobs that require skilled training, but maybe not a four-year degree. In the next half hour, we'll explore some of the programs we've encountered. Chuck it up and see if you can get it spinning nice and true. Uh, I'm William Menser. This is uh, John Marshall High School, and uh, our program is called Marshall County Machine. Uh, the program name and the course description is Machine Tool Technologies. Uh, the students learn how to make precision parts with precision machineries using vertical mills and metal lays and things of that nature. Well today we're working on this thing called air motors. It's a motor that you can hook up to an air compressor and it's like small and it runs off of air. It's okay. something very intricate and cool. Even more than being a machinist is how to be an employee. You got to be on time. You got to come to work every day. You got to do as you're asked. And they don't understand that. They understand it by the time they leave, but they don't understand that coming in. Every single year since I've been here, uh, we've been able to place kids in machine shops right out of high school. Every kid that wanted to be a machinist, and they don't all want to be, but every kid that wanted to be a machinist got the job. Public high schools in West Virginia have become leaders in simulated workplace education. Kids completing what are called career and technical education, or CTE programs, graduate high school, college, and career ready, having earned certifications and college credits. Simulated workplace programs often create company names, kids have uniforms, they clock in every day, just like they would at a real job. They can also get fired. West Virginia leads the nation with simulated workplace. We include drug testing. We stress the importance of attendance, show up, test clean. Those are the two biggest things we're hearing from industry. That's what they need. This is the Wessel County Tech Center. Our welding game has stepped up from just plate welding to pipe welding to uh, different processes of welding, to flux core, to MIG, to uh, TIG. We've got new machinery, updated machinery. We've got um, abilities for the students to make projects, uh, signs, fireplaces, uh, trailers, log splitters. This shop is fully equipped to make anything we want to do as a work simulated project. We have a 5x10 CNC plasma machine. Um, this machine is definitely the ornamental side of welding. Our students have learned how to use different programs to design what you would want. Perhaps it's a sign and you want a silhouette with your name. This is our plasma cutter. It runs off of a program Inkscape. You make the drawing, then you put it into sheet cam where you set the thickness of the metal and how it wants to cut it. Like, because there's a beveler and then a plasma cutter, so you could choose which one you want. Uh, this is our logo we've made here out at the center. Mm -hmm. So first it should cut in the inside, then go around and cut it out. It's also going to cut that inside. Right now in this area, the jobs are booming. With the uh, oil and gas industry, they need welders. We have a lot of construction trades around here, a lot of new projects going up with cracker plants, coal fire furnace plants projects, uh, repairs. The coal mine has a lot of industry working in it for welding with the uh, repairs to the equipment which requires MIG welding and pipe fitting. Um, a, lot of, a lot of these construction trades around here are taking apprenticeship programs. They offer those for these kids to get into. Like I've always wanted to be a welder since I was five or six. You could need a welder at three in the morning to weld a piece of pipe that bursts through the night right. or fix something like that. And I've seen the opportunities you could have with it, so I went with it. We hope that these kids will leave here with jobs or the ability to get a job or the ability to open up their own business, or the ability to carry on at a trade school and continue on. And so far, they're proving that they can, and they are. Some high school programs start the simulated workplace experience by making students apply to get into the programs. 
My name is Macy Johnson, and this is the nursing program at John Marshall High School. Your sophomore year, you can do what we call medical terminology. We learn about all the abbreviations and stuff like that. And then you can actually interview to get in this program. Only 20 people can get in. And um, once you get the interview, and if you get in, you start your junior year. And like I said, we uh, learn all the human body systems. And then senior year, we go to clinicals at Good Shepherd Nursing Home. That's for a whole semester. We do four days of clinicals. And then after we do clinicals, we have a little more study time our second semester and then we take our test. Yes. Our therapeutic services program, our CNA program, Certified Nursing Assistant program, we have two instructors there. The dilemma is we typically have anywhere from 35 to 45 students that want in it. And we can only take 20. It's very competitive. It's competitive again in all these programs. The equipment used in CTE programs today is usually what the students will use in the workforce. This not only prepares them for the job, it also gives them a leg up with potential employers. The kids are getting a lot of hands-on, multi-camera production experience. The students are in, in charge of the entire production, from directing, technical directing, camera operating, audio, lights, the, they do it all. Stand by in the studio. I, I'm a floor director and I um, run a teleprompter. Out in the field, I do um, photography as well, mm -hmm. just still photography. I went into this program because I was interested in the camera work and I got to learn more about all the different types of cameras like DSLRs, video cameras, stuff like that. And um, when I graduate, I want to be a photographer or a videographer or work behind the scenes in a newsroom. Most cosmetology programs offer services to the public, which is kind of a win-win. Students get a real-world experience, and the public usually gets a pretty good deal. My name is Erin Brown. You are at the Mercer County Vocational School in Princeton, West Virginia. This is the cosmetology department. We learn aesthetics, which is skin care. Um, we, learn, we learn how to be nail technicians. We also learn um, hair. The public can come in. Um, we offer all the services here. We do facials, we do pedicures, manicures, hair, anything with hair, updos, perms. Um, we do nails, all that. This is an adult program and okay. a program for high schoolers as well. As adults, it's about a two-year program. High schoolers will come for a three-year term. They'll come and do the hair as an adult. Once we graduate, we'll be licensed cosmetologists for the state of West Virginia. We will be a licensed esthetician, which is skin care, a licensed nail technician, and a licensed hairstylist. This program has opened up a lot of opportunity for, for this area, for myself included. It's just, it's a great program. We have great instructors. We have, we have great administrators at the school. It's just, it's a fantastic place to be. Many aerospace CTE programs are designed to be solid foundations for further education. In such a highly technical field, it can really give students a head start on college credits. My name is Madison Dye. We're in aerospace. We're in aerospace too right now. We're building our, our RC planes and at the moment we have the propeller running and we're connecting it to this part to make it fly. We, if we take Aerospace 1, 2, 3, and 4, then we can graduate with about 12 to 15 college credits and then we can do like different certifications and it'll help us whenever we go, if we go into the engineering field. For Aerospace, we're building a plane, like an RC airplane, out of mainly foam. Right now, we're working on this servo because the servo is what's going to control the wiring so it moves the flight control surfaces which will orient it in whenever we're flying it. And as we're adding all the components to it, we have to think about the placement of them so the weight distribution is right. So we're trying to orient it to where it's up here mainly. Right now, I am flying a King Air A350 from Charleston Yeager Airport to uh, Raleigh County Memorial Airport. One of the uh, junior level projects that you do is you create a flight plan to um, fly in the simulator. I am Kim Cortinas and I teach aerospace engineering at Oak Hill High School. It's grades 9, 10, 11, and 12 and today the ninth graders are launching their rockets. 
They're getting to use a lot of the skills that they've been working on all year. They've learned to CAD at the beginning of the year, so they will be using those CADding skills on the nose cone. Inside their nose cone, it has to be hollowed out because they're carrying a payload as though they're bringing supplies to a space station, astronauts. Um, everyone has the same amount of weight in their nose cone. They will take measurements outside, and when we come back, we'll use trigonometry to see how high everyone's rockets went. It's a really great curriculum. The kids get a taste of lots of different parts of engineering, um, you know, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering. The 3D design even could go into biomedical engineering, so they get a taste of a lot of different parts of engineering. I started off as a math teacher. That is my core content area. And I did not know a whole lot about CTE, to be honest with you. I mean, I knew that there were kids taking auto mechanics, and I knew that we had kids taking welding, but I didn't really, I didn't really understand it. And um, I think that CTE is an excellent option for kids. These kids are using rigorous math skills, rigorous science skills, and they're in groups every day, like the real world is. It's a great class to teach, it really is. As graduation approaches, high school programs will invite employers from all kinds of industries to meet students as possible hires. We're at JDRCC right now for the reverse job fair. My name is Charlie Gibson and this is Sierra Lonkert. Um, we're already CNAs. A lot of uh, the places are having sign-on bonuses where you get $1,000, you get 500 of it whenever you start, and then six months later you get the other 500. There is such high demand that people are like, like raising their pay to get people. Today what we're doing is, uh, for the first time ever, we are hosting a series of reverse job fairs across the state where we are having business folks come in and get to talk to the students that are interested in full-time employment after graduation, uh, see the uh, equipment that we have here, and just really uh, get to know the students in the Career Center to make those connections moving forward. Today here at JDR, uh, for registration, we've got probably close to about 40 different business folks that are here today talking with our students to talk about the job opportunities to stay here in the state. We're working very closely with the Department of Commerce to ensure that all of our technical programs are aligned to meet business and industry needs here in the state today. I would have never known about half of these places. Yeah, we didn't like, even want to do this because we both have jobs, but they yeah. already offered us better than what better we're money making. Better money than what we're making, yeah. Reverse job fairs are beyond my expectations. Uh, we had the idea because we were having a disconnect between employers finding uh, smart and intelligent employees and people that could fill their jobs the way they needed and our students being able to find jobs in West Virginia, too many of them were leaving our state. So we came up with the idea, what if we took it upon ourselves to reverse the job fairs and bring the employers in to speak to our young people uh, and let them make the connection there. And it has been beyond our expectations. We came today in hopes of interacting with possible candidates for multiple workforce openings within our company. Potential employees, obviously we like to have them uh, be trained and familiar with the type of work that we do and have a skill set that would uh, enhance productivity. Um, the norm has been, oh you need to go to college, you need to go to college. Not anymore. There's opportunities in businesses such as ours to where um, you, know, you can well exceed double the median household income just with one individual working. So, and you don't have to go to college for that. Learn and earn programs are also becoming more popular, whether it's a formal union apprenticeship program or one developed through work initiatives, students are getting foundational courses in a classroom and then are being paid to learn on the job. The wooden poles can be up to 120 feet. Uh, towers can uh, be 150 to 250 feet. And sometimes they're, they're higher than that. Today's our last day of training. Uh, before we go out on Learn to Earn, for 16 weeks we've been climbing, practicing, uh, learning all the ins and outs of pole climbing and line work for the past eight weeks. My name is Mike King. and uh, We're at Bridge Valley Community and Technical College in the Montgomery campus. And uh, I'm the instructor for the uh, Utility Line Service Program. It, it is teaching people to climb poles, uh, obtain their CDL Class A uh, driver's license, 
they also learn to run some uh, pieces of heavy equipment, a mini excavator, a skid steer, and a backhoe. They also get their OSHA 10 and some other qualifications that our uh, employers have asked us to add to the program. While you're in the eight-week course here, you'll get your uh, certifications in pole climbing. You'll get your certification in bucket rescue and pole top rescue. You'll also obtain your CDL Class A driver's permit too. And then uh, once you go on to earn and learn, you'll be put into an apprentice program and then move up through the ranks. And then as you move up through the ranks, you'll actually become a full-time journey lineman. The ultimate goal is to become a journeyman lineman at the end of your apprenticeship. The apprenticeships for this type of work, it definitely helps you a lot. Whenever you go to an interview for an employer, possibly for a full-time job, and you say, hey, I've been doing this for 16 weeks or however long, I've got experience, and you might name off a couple significant jobs you've done. It definitely looks good on your resume. Yeah, we have a learn and earn program for the 16 weeks, the next 16 weeks of this program. This is a way for the student to earn some money while they're going to school. It also gives the employer a chance to see how well is this student going to fit in with their workforce. Right now, we're probably at 95% of the folks that go to work for an employer stay with that employer. A lineman's there to pretty much restore power, build new power lines, any new structures, there to run electric to them, storms, do storm work to restore power. I mean, anytime it's electrical need, we're there to help it out and fix it. We need to recruit more young folks, and we need to start that at an earlier, earlier age. The salary for a journeyman lineman is up somewhere close to $50 an hour right now, and there's bunches of overtime. Most folks come through this program in three years, they'll make 100000 a year. Union training is based in a long-standing tradition where experienced workers pass knowledge on to apprentices. Apprentices are then paid on a sliding scale as their knowledge grows. Wheeling's a typical rust bucket town, the heart of steel country, and you know we, we retrofitted lots and lots of older buildings, but until the gas and oil industry took off and the surplus of money coming in from that industry, we hadn't had a lot of downtown investment in the Wheeling area, and now we're seeing that. My name's Corey Dornan. I'm a member of Labor's Local 1149 in Wheeling, West Virginia and I work at the Laborers Training Center in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. We train our next generation of laborers to make a living out on the construction sites that we have in West Virginia and the surrounding areas. Well, we're trained to do every aspect of what we may be faced with out there. I've got a list of certifications um, since I started in this, from concrete and the scaffolding, and I'm doing hoisting and rigging this week. The first year was very informative. That's when the pipeline qualifications came into play. Gas and oil related pipeline work right now is why a lot of people are coming in, but they're finding out very quickly when they come in, we do a lot more than just pipeline. You have to start out in your first year, which is like concrete and a little bit of scaffolding and just your basic skills that you're gonna need out on the job. And then when you get to your second year, that's whenever you learn the more crucial part of what it is that you are going to be doing or could do, that type of stuff. And then you hit your journeyman status. And then that puts you out in the field to where you can do things on your own and people trust you to do those type of jobs. The way our apprenticeship works, once we get out of our classes, we get right to work and they'll put us right out there with the journeyman. So we have the classroom aspect of the apprenticeship. And then we're right there working with experienced people who have been doing this. And they do provide a dorm facility and meals. And if you had all of your training in, then you graduated and became a journeyman. And then you were starting to invest in the people coming through behind you. Become a journeyman, it means that you pretty much worked your butt off and learned all these skills in order for you to go out into the field and build things. Most of these apprenticeship programs carry college credit with them. So even if you do decide you want to go to college later, you've already funded yourself with a nice wage and a trade that you can always use to provide for you and your family. There are pre-apprenticeship programs that will train students in multiple fields as well as help with the application process to get them into an actual apprenticeship. One such program is geared to help women get certified in different trades. West Virginia Women Work has been around for about 20 years. 
We started in Morgantown and have grown since then. We've added the classroom here in Charleston. We have another construction class in Wheeling and we have two advanced manufacturing classes in Huntington and in Bridgeport. I am the program coordinator for the Step Up for Women Construction Training Program. We are a program of West Virginia Women Work. Step Up for Women is a pre-apprenticeship construction training program that trains women in three areas, carpentry, plumbing, and electrical. During the class, they learn their trades with hands-on applications, but also during the class, they are trained in their soft skills, which is resume writing, interview skills, um, interview boards, 48 and 360. as well as um, communication and other soft skills that will make finding employment easier. So you've made this a quarter long. We are learning carpentry, like to build picnic tables and sheds and stuff, and we also learn plumbing and electric. I'm hoping to go into an apprenticeship program to try to get my license and trying line. to Remember, get certified. Yeah, I, I hope to go into the like finishing part of the construction, like going into houses and fixing them up and stuff. A pre-apprenticeship gets them ready, teaches them about an apprenticeship. It teaches them what they'll be doing and what's expected out of them. We're just setting them up for success within the apprenticeship. You can show her how to do the corner. Now that needs to happen at both ends. The thing that I like about apprenticeships is, is you do get paid while you're learning. Each year that you've been there, so much classroom time, so much work time, you get a little bit more money a year. Um, and you can really make a lot in the trades. I've always kind of been interested in carpentry, hands-on, and they train you in construction, plumbing, and electrical. To be able to have that power of saying I have a career, it's solid, and that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my life is, is great. Our graduates have pursued careers in the Carpenters Union, Millwrights Union, Plumber Pipe Fitters, uh, residential construction companies, um, paving companies. We've had students start their own businesses, iron workers, IBW. They really have their fingers in a lot in the state of West Virginia. Many community and technical colleges are working directly with employers to prepare students for employment. Some of the programs have an on-the-job component where students are paid to learn. These mechanics are hard to find. I try to find them. We're growing rapidly and you can't find any anywhere. Bridge Valley approached me with, hey, we have an opportunity to give you an intern. Well, we'll pay half their wage and they can work up to 40 hours a week. So as a business owner, it was obviously a great choice. I just finished my first year at Bridge Valley and then I'll have one more year left and then I'll receive my degree in diesel technology with applied science. This is my internship here at Russell's. It's very nice to be getting paid uh, and to learn every day. People coming in with different issues, you know, I get to see different diagnoses. And, you know, they can only offer you so much at a school, but they offer us a, a lot there, a, a really nice foundation to go off of. But whenever you come here, you know, it's everything. It's everything from semis to little cars. <laughs> the pattern of the old days of just coming to a job and working the same thing for 40 years and retiring, I think has definitely changed. Technology has evolved everything. So in diesel mechanics and trades now, there's always room to grow. There are many opportunities in West Virginia for career training. Navigating career paths, though, can be overwhelming at times. Workforce West Virginia is there to help connect the dots. Workforce West Virginia is your one-stop shop for anything training or employment related. We are the state's unemployment insurance benefit provider, but we also provide various workforce development services funded through the Department of Labor. Someone can come in and get assistance with finding a job, with training, with career exploration. If you're looking for a job and need a place to start, come see us. If you're, if you're working somewhere and want something better, come see us. That's, that's what we're here for. When I got out of the Army, I was driving up back up here to move back to West Virginia from Texas. And as I was driving on the way home, I seen a billboard that actually had a lineman school on it. I started looking up lineman schools and seeing what it was all about. And then I stumbled across Bridge Valley's program. And then it said it went through the workforce. So I got a hold of the workforce and got more information on it. And then before I knew it, I was in the course and ready to go. Workforce West Virginia does have some specific programs for veterans. Of course, veterans receive priority of service on all training dollars and um, jobs that come into our system. 
but we also have specialized staff that work with veterans. Workforce West Virginia has been great to work with. Uh, they provide some of the funding for the students and uh, they actually they do some of the advertising. Uh, they, they actually send some folks to us uh, that want to be students. Come into our offices. Um, we have a lot of online resources to do career exploration and really look at what the up and coming jobs are and what training that requires and see if we can link that up with the interests of the student and try to get a career path going whether it be through career and technical education or uh, community college. We can explore apprenticeships opportunities or um, applying for funding through the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. In demand occupations, anything, you know, anything in the healthcare field, ranging from um, x-ray technicians, clear up through uh, phlebotomy, LPNs, RNs, um, dental assistants, um, HVAC, electricians. Um, even the hospitality industry, uh, there's a lot of demand in that in the service industry across the state. In the northern part of the state, north central West Virginia, there's a, a big trend with oil and gas. There's definitely a need for individuals who are interested in, go in going into the, the natural gas field. Manufacturing is really big in the eastern panhandle. There are a lot of jobs. We have more jobs available than we have people to fill jobs. Today's workers need advanced skills. We know we have the work ethic built into our community. Fortunately, people are stepping up and thinking outside of the box to help create pathways to that workforce. Hopefully, people will be able to take advantage of the opportunities in the state, and together, we can revitalize West Virginia. This project is sponsored by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.